Thank you for tuning in to uh, another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Monday, October the 17th, 2016. Well, it's been a very uneventful day for the most part. Market really isn't doing a whole lot, not giving you a whole lot. So we'll see how things develop as the week goes on. Uh, here you're looking at a chart of GE. Uh, GE is indicated on the um, <clears throat> excuse me weekly pulse waves sheet, and it has been on there for months. Um, this one is in the Kumo cloud. It's in a um, a downtrend. You can see it's in a in a correction from the bull market it was in. It's now trading below the long-term trend line and it's in the Kumo cloud of death so we can't really trust the price action in here we won't know what's going to become of this stock until it breaks either below the Kumo cloud or above it but as things are setting up right now it is the beginning stages of a bear market in GE uh, we will have this confirmed if it breaks below the Kumo cloud if it breaks back up above the cloud it may try to resurrect itself and breathe life but overhead resistance is at 3150 um, so that's GE alright now moving on to the good stuff looking here at gold futures uh, as you can see it's trading hovering around the 250 two, uh, sorry 1250 to 1260 range uh, just hugging this trend line here for dear life we're still coming from oversold or trying to um, we'll see what can gather for the week but it looks like it's trying to come back um, this will be a good sign but if not you still have an air pocket between the long term trend line and the top of the Kumo cloud but just as I said with the ramp I think that over uh, the course of time you're going to see prices behave just like I said and this is going to catapult once we get a few several more weeks out boom there you are uh, 1372.30 taken out easily as we break above 1400 so long way to go here in the goal in the meantime you just trade what you see so how does this translate into our miners let's take a look all right, looking at Nugget, N-U-G-T, as you can see here on the daily chart, it is in a negative downtrend on the daily chart, and it's in a negative pulse wave, so it's just waffling along here. The idea would be if it can break back above 1526, that would be great. If not, then we're looking at this being sort of a glass floor that will be broken down through. If that is the case, then dust should begin to show us uh, signs on the opposite. Let's take a look at that. Oh, but before we go, notice your resistance levels on the nugget. 1526 is your first uh, resistance. Second is at 1948. And then you have the air pocket from 1948 up to the $25 price level, which is going to put you inside of the thin-layered Kumo cloud. All right, taking a look at dust. Dust is in a uptrend, as you can see. It is bullish. Uh, you had um, the short-term uh, trend line crossing above the longer-term trend line, and it's rising. Prices are stagnant you're trading in a wide range here and so we're gonna have to see how this plays out if gold continues to pull back then this will break out of that range and head up toward the 55 mark however if not then the 4273 the current support will not hold and you'll get back down toward the long-term support of forty dollars and five cents if that does not hold, you got the air pocket down to 35. And that's going to be your last level of support because then once you break through 30, that's all she wrote. And then that's a negative trend at that point. Try to get something going back here. And as you can see, 
inside the Kumo cloud of death, like I told you, you cannot trust the price action. It can do what it wants to do. It made you think it was going to break below, then it didn't, then it comes back up, and then here you are breaking out of the Kumo cloud. It's just hard to say. And this whole time, you were, you were bearish. You're in a bear market. All right, and it's confirmed. And you stopped making new lows after you, you broke the support here. Then you quickly reversed. So that's why you have to look at the longer term charts to determine where we may end up going. But from the day by day, you can see how this kind of waffles around and you just have to look for the, the support and resistance levels to determine what you're going to do. And if that does not work for you, then instead of handicapping yourself, the best thing to do is to use the weekly pulse wave price triggers. That's what they're there for. You don't have to second guess. You don't have to be married to a belief or a system of thought. All you have to do is obey the price action and do what the price action tells you. All right, looking at JDST now, which is your inverse of, which is the inverse of the JNUG, which we'll take a look at next. But as you can see, as the miners continue to pull back, then this will break out of the Kumo cloud. Right now, you're inside of the Kumo cloud and trading in a range. All right, so your range inside the Kumo cloud, will it break out? Will it break down? Who knows? It's tough to say. So you have to look at your weekly pulse waves to get an idea and gauge where the direction may be headed. Everything else is flat. You're getting no readings whatsoever. Market's not telling you anything. You just have to follow the price action and wait and see which way it breaks. So let's take a look at JNUG to see if we're getting any clues there. Well, as you can see, it's in pullback mode. It's it's bearish on the daily chart. Broke uh, last week's two-week support. And then here you are at the $10 handle. So the question is, are we going to see a break of first resistance at 1387, second resistance at 1789, then the air pocket to the bottom of the Kumo cloud, putting you back up towards between $22 and $25? Or are we going to see something else? that's the question we don't know yet that's why we take a look at the pulse waves and let that determine what we do all right taking a look at a G first majestic and you can see the pain has been continuing uh, that's why you use stops you know if I understand long-term positions and things of that nature but again buy and hold is dead this is not a brick of gold all right, AG is a stock, thus a stock must be traded. Um, if it's a stock trading below $5 a share, then you don't have to worry about it. You can buy and hold a $5 stock, a $2 stock, a $1 stock, an 80 cent stock. Okay, I give you permission to buy and hold that. Not a problem. All right, what's the worst that can happen? You know what I mean? Um, unless you think the company's going out of uh, business. All right. So that's, I'll give you that. But when you're talking about a stock that's trading about 20 bucks, uh, you need to stop in. Because once the port is taking out, you quickly become a bear market. Look at this. All right. And so you have to be defensive. And you have to look at what you need to do. Take the money and run. That's what you do. Okay. Let's take a look now at our next candidate. All right, taking a look at Pretty Ricky, Richmond Mining, same thing. Uh, the pain got really bad. It got all the way down to $8.23. And that was from way up yonder, okay? Um, you got a chance when it topped out at 11.66. You had opportunities to stop the bleeding before it gapped on you and continued down. Now, one thing to look for though is that you know ga all gaps must be filled this gap here that was created on the uh, October the 4th of 2016 has not been filled so it's going to need to get back up here so that means you're looking at 
price action getting somewhere between nine dollars and thirty three cent and I want to say nine dollars and fifty five cents so you got about a twenty cent range to be to fill at around here and then that's going to be pivotal will the market continue the upward trajectory or will it resume the downtrend it's tough to say just by looking at the chart it's telling you nothing but the pulse waves tell you the full story currently you have resistance at 914 945 and 1024 respectively will pre Ricky go from here it looks to me like it's trying to build up find a base for a bottom and then he wants to head back up and catapult itself above twelve dollars a share so what about silver silvers looking weak on the daily trying to build some support trying to come up here on build up some momentum overhead resistance right now uh, is at eighteen dollars and sixteen cents and eighteen dollars and thirty four cents and eighteen dollars and seventy two cents respectively and then that's when you get to the air pocket from there all the way up to about twenty dollars so where will it go we'll have to ask the pulse waves to see all right looking at crude oil all right and you can see momentum's coming off price action really hasn't broken any supports yo so we'll have to wait and see what happens on this one too so first support is at 48.79 and then you have 46.99 when you get to the air pocket to the kumo cloud and that's going to put you right below 46 dollars a share um i'm sorry a barrel and this is your crude oil futures so we're moving sideways right now but you and i both know the up tra upward trajectory is there uh it wants to get up to 60 and before all all is said and done before we see if we're going to power up to the next leg up or if it's going to correct and move sideways or crash back down again i think 60 has to be reached first so that's where we are on that one how does this translate in what we do let's see looking at the share price of uwti at 26 dollars 88 cents a share well it currently has uh, support right now at 26.21 we'll see if that can hold trend line supports at 24.43 that puts it well into the kumo cloud of death and we won't know until the market breaks out or breaks down so we'll have to wait and be patient and see what happens can it stay out of the cloud from here can it move and start moving up here and head head up to 30 from here that's the question we won't have an answer until the price action tells us so we'll be watching that to see what happens looking at the stock market I told you there was no crash look at the daily chart here look how many days this market has been going sideways complete this this is not normal price action by any stretch by any means this here is more proof of fed manipulation look at how perfect the lines are the bars are look at this you can't make this stuff up look at this perfect perfect range bound trading staying within the kumo cloud coloring perfectly within the lines not allowing anything to break out or break down out of this kumo cloud that is absolutely amazing that means from so from here this bar from this bar to this bar the dow technically has has done absolutely nothing all right the close of this bar was 17.953. The close of this bar is 17.987. So let's get this straight. <laughs> this is this is unbelievable. So you basically got a 30 point move. So let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. That's a full month of trading right there. Twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, and then it's the twenty-six bar. We're on bar number twenty-six. 
all right so in over a month and a week of trading the Dow has only moved 30 points so all these people talking about the crash the smash the splash of the stock market what are you talking about this is hardly a crash a smash a thrash a clash what are you talking about all this is is fed manipulation period still don't believe me take another look here's your weekly chart what do you see market still in a bullish position bullish position short-term trend line is not crossed below the long-term trend line it hasn't crossed above it back here back on April the 25th of this year boom and it's managed to stay up ever since hitting new highs leveling off now that's it just a level off and it's showing oversold and it's not even nowhere near the trend line very very interesting even if it were to fall from here you still have the matter of the trend line support of 17721 and then you have the top of the Kuma cloud you got this huge air pocket of 500 points from 17500 down to 17 even right smack dab in the middle of the Kuma cloud <laughs> so it could do that and still humbug there's nothing to talk about it's not a crash even if it comes here it's not a crash it's not a crash yes it will be movement of 1600 points but because you have over 10,000 points of air lifting this market up 1800 points is nothing all right so with that said remember bulls make money bears make money and pigs get slaughtered so remember to take what you can and give nothing back and do yourself a favor come on over and visit us at our new website pulsewavetrading.com that's pulsewavetrading.com pulsewavetrading.com peace